Hello, my name is Lin Nguyen. In this video, I'll be going over how to do the set driven key uh, setup and the solid knee setup for the leg. This is for my students uh, at the Art Institute. Um, I do have another video that covers this along with a IKFK blend, but for the sake of the class, I'm just going to have one that just focuses on creating the leg um, with the uh, solid knee setup and the set driven key f foot rolls and whatnot. So, let's start off. Um, here's um, my scene right here. I'm going to go to my joint tool. So underneath the animation tab, click your joint tool. And for those who are not familiar with the new Maya 2012 setup, um, when you're creating joints, it's a little bit different now. For those who'd like to use a uh, none back bend, that is with this checkbox right here. This is equivalent to the old none drop down. Uh, and the rest are like X, Y, Z, or whatever other setting that you used to have. There's also the plus or minus that you could have chosen in the past, too. Based on that, it shouldn't be too difficult. I'm using the, I want to use X, Y, Z. Uh, again, um, I want to make sure that my rigs are compatible with 3D Studio Max. Uh, I have a tendency to jump between the two applications a lot, so I like to make sure my rigs work for both. So you want to turn off the scale compensate because the radius inside of 3ds Max for their joints do make a difference with their weighting. I'm sure anyone who's ever rigged in 3ds Max knows what I'm talking about. The next thing is, uh, even though you turn this off, you want to make sure that these joint sizes match at the top. Um, right here, it's mainly a uh, in Maya, it's mainly a GUI change, um, a visual change to you. Seeing the different numbers. So you had a bigger joint or a smaller joint depending on the joint size or how long or short it is. And essentially it just makes it easier so you can see things. So if you're going to work on a pair of legs, the legs are longer so the joints are going to be larger. And when you get down to the fingers, uh, the joints are smaller. But uh, that doesn't transfer properly when you're going from Maya to 3D Studio Max. So I want to make it so these values look the same. And that way if you were to export as an FBX into Max, that the joint sizes and whatnot all stay the same and you should have um, little to no problems with the uh, weight transfer from Maya to 3D Studio Max. Alright, so with that being said, I'm going to just create a leg uh, with the same joint settings I've just created. Um, here we go. Let's call this our leg right here. As usual, I would recommend to uh, rename your joints. So go to your joints here. Then we're going to the channel box editor. I'm going to rename this joint. And using uh, the down arrow, I can go through the next joint also. So either you can do that or you can just click on this joint here. I'm going to use a down arrow. Alright, now that we've named everything, what you want to do next is go to your IK Handle tool, and we're going to double click on this, and we're going to use an IK RP solver from your hip to your ankle. Then again, we're going to change to an IK SC solver. This is a single chain solver. And the RP is a rotate plane solver. So let's use our ch single chains. We're using that from the ankle to the ball. And again from the ball to the toe. We want to rename all of these joints. My IK handles. So this will be my, I'll just call it toe IK. It is easier for me to remember it this way. Ball IK. And I'll call this my ankle IK. I go back to my joint tool and this time I'm going to create an inverse version of this so starting from the heel to the toe to the ball to the ankle so knowing that I'm gonna click over here hold X I wanna snap right here then hold V snap snap, snap. We want to rename this to inverse heel joint inverse toe joint 
inverse ball joint and inverse ankle joint. Now we have those. I'm going to go to the perspective view. Just make sure everything is aligned properly because there are times I've created this where this joint chain right here does not go exactly in the center. Now go to window, hypergraph hierarchy. Go over here. I want to parent these to these over here. So I'm going to middle mouse, click, drag, and drop from the inverse toe IK to the inverse toe joint. Middle mouse, drag, and drop the ball to the inverse ball joint, and the ankle to the inverse ankle joint. That should give you an effect that allows your feet to move like so. There's a problem though if we were to move this back around here, the knee starts flipping. So let's address that problem. I'm going to create a curve. This will be a controller. Make this whatever shape you want it to be. It doesn't really matter. pivot from here to the heel and freeze our transforms and let's rename it to click on I'm then going to parent these two and with that I have a controller that controls the rest well all of this is so far fairly easy um, I said I wanted to make sure the knee is fixed, so I'm going to have my controller selected. Go to Edit, Add Attribute. I'm going to add several attributes. So I'm going to do a knee twist attribute. All these are the same. Add and a compensate attribute. I'm going to add that. You see them pop up? down here if you did it right. From there we're going to open our um, hypershade. So if I go in here underneath the rendering editor so you'll find hypershade. Move this in here. Here we go. What I want to do now is I want to make sure I select the IK handle then shift select this controller, then go to my graph, add selected graph. Okay, I'm going to scroll down now. I'm going to look for my multiply divide and my uh, plus minus average nodes. I'm going to do that under just neat utilities, so we'll go there faster, and you'll find the plus minus average and your multiply divide, which we'll just scroll this up. Here we go. If these do not pop up immediately, you find it underneath the utilities. You can always middle mouse drag this down. So here I have these right here. I'm going to right click over the side. I want to use my compensate. Right click on the side. Plug it in. I'm going to grab my knee twist. So what's going on right here? Uh, this right here I'm going to plug in to have two both of the values right here to control the twisting of the knee. This way I have the knee twisting. Uh, what we're going to solve is the knee flipping on top. So if I go back here I'm going to right click output 1D right click input 1x from here I'm going to right click on the output for x plug that into the twist 
Now, if I check this, if I were to click on the name, I can middle mouse drag and back and forth. Same with the compensate. So, I wanted to point out one thing first. First of all, if I uh, go to the right, the knee goes to the left. If I go to the left, the knee goes to the right. Uh, this can easily be solved using the multiply divide node. The multiply divide node is created purely for this little problem. I can then now, if I double click on this, I can go over here and take this value and multiply it by a negative one. Once I do that, then when I go here, use my knee twist, it goes to the right, and it goes to the left properly. Pretty simple. So let's look at a little problem still. It still should be there. So if I take this and move it up, it still flips. So why does that happen? The problem with that is due to the IK handles whole vector values. So if I were to just change this value here to a solid one, and this these two and make sure they're both zero, I can then go to my foot controller, go to my compensate and set it to a negative ninety. So why does this exactly happen? So if I go here, the problem with it is um, the pull vector needs to have a certain direction in which it needs to point at. And if the pull vector is pointing on the side, then it never needs to know what way the knee needs to flip. If I have it pointing in any other direction, like so forward, or, in, or um, wherever Y is at, then it'll have a tendency to try to flip in the other direction. On X though, because it's on the side, it doesn't look at the front or back directions. It's just making sure that I have the pull vector pointing over here now. And all we need to do is compensate for the twist at 90, so it twists back to where it needs to be at. And turn this is at negative 90. Now I can move back and forth. So, um, Usually what we need to do is because the compensate um, is right here, a lot of people who were to animate this would look at this and think, hey, I can rotate the knee with this too. So it's a bit dangerous leaving this out there for an animator to accidentally animate with. So what you want to do is click on it, right click on compensate, and go in the lock and hide selected. It'll lock and hide it from your list so that they no longer can accidentally use it to animate. So the next thing we want to do is create the whole set driven key system. Um, well, first of all, let's just see that. There it goes. Beautiful knee. It doesn't break anymore. So let's create some attributes that control the knee and let it uh, move. Actually, where the feet move and the toes move and etc. So I'm going to edit add attribute and add several of these new ones. So I'm going to go into a long name here and add a foot roll. Then I'm going to add a separate control for each of them because um, there's the automated one and then of course there's always all the controls. So I'm going to make all these separate. Uh, for the students, you guys don't need all every last one of these. The ones I'm going to add first are the ones you'll need for your uh, quiz. So this one right here, I'll just call it as a toe swivel. And I want to make sure I have a minimum of something, a max. I want to default at zero. And I'm going to have a toe tap, which I also want to do as a zero, five, zero. And um, that should be it for the requirement for your class. Um, an add addition I like to add is the ball roll by itself. Addition with a toe roll in case they want to just move one of them by itself. So zero, five, zero. And I purposely made sure that I did not add all, uh, do the values all properly. So if I go here, if I go and look at these numbers, some of them are wrong. So if I go to modify, edit attribute, I can then go back and fix any of the issues that I have. For example, if I mess up my foot roll, I can click on my foot roll and say, hey, I need a minimum and a maximum. I want a minimum of negative 10 and a max of 5. And if I wanted to change my toe swivel, I can go back in here and say, you know what, I want a negative 5 
for my min, for my toe swivel. This allows you to go back and edit stuff, so that way, when you check out things like the toe swivel, I can now go negative 5 and positive 5, and foot roll and go all the way negative 10 to positive 5. So what do you want to do next? You want to make sure you select the proper joints to do our set driven key. So I'm going to animate set driven key set. And right now I have nothing loaded. So I want to make sure I select my controller. That's the foot con. And I'm going to load it as my driver. And go to window, hypergraph hierarchy. This way it's a little bit easier to select certain joints. And what I want to select is my inverse ball, inverse toe, inverse heel, and the toe IK, and I'm going to load that as my driven. So that being said, I'm going to go over here now, and I'm going to set several keys. Let's, uh, let me get my foot roll first. So at, I'm going to start from a zero. So while foot roll is at zero, I'm going to choose foot roll, click on my inverse ball, toe, and heel, at which rotation? I'm just going to click on this and rotate it real quick and see what I'm rotating at. It is Z, so I'm going to click on Rotate Z, and I'm going to key. Next, I'm going to set my foot roll to the value of 5. With my heel, I can just rotate this until I don't think it should rotate any further. So I'm going to keep rotating this and see what is my max extent in which this joint goes before it just goes to a superior snap. And I'm going to base it off of that. I like writing my numbers off. So in this case, I'm going to be at 80. So with inverse heel joint selected, rotate Z selected with foot roll. I'm going to key that. I'm going to go back here. Set my foot roll to a negative 5 value. And I'm going to, this time, rotate my ball joint to see how high I want this to be at. So this, this is measuring like when you're walking, how high do you want the ball to go before the uh, toe is forced to rotate up. I'm going to set it to a 30. That, I'm going to key that. And again, I'm going to set this now lower. I also want to key the toe. So I'm going to go back to the toe. Key that. So the foot roll now at negative 10. I want to rotate the toe now higher up. I'll set this to 50. Now key this. So the reason why I keyed the toe at negative 5 was to hold the frame. It's like when you're animating the whole keyframe, same idea. So this way if I go back, I have all of that. Why extremes? This is just in case the person animating wants to make it so that they can really rotate it really high. The less limitations you give them, the more happy they are. This is also why I like to add the bow, uh, the, the, the toe and ball uh, rolls separately so that they can um, rotate that even further if they really wanted to. This is just to make walk cycles just a little bit easier. This now to uh, zero. I'm going to work on the toe swivel now. So this time I'm working on the toe swivel. And what axis am I rotating on? Let's find out. I'm going to click on this joint real quick and go back and forth. I click on the wrong one. Let's go really close. I'm just looking the inverse toe joint. If I go back and forth here, it's my toe swivel. I'm on rotate Y, so I'm going to use my toe at rotate Y. I'm going to key it first at zero, because that's always something you always want to do. Toe swivel at negative five now. What do I want as my negative? I want to have it so when I rotate this inverse toe, over here. I'm going to give it a full max of 90 in case the person really wants to go pretty far. Key that. Set this toe swivel now to a positive 5. And rotate Y this time at negative 90. Should go complete opposite. And key that. So now if I go here, I should have a toe swivel that goes back and forth. Pretty neat. Next, um, if I look down here, I have a toe tap. Toe tap's a little bit different. Well, at least the way I do it's a little bit different. Um, I This time I want to play with a toe IK because I'm moving things up and down. I'm using translate Y and toe tap. I'll just key that. And this time, 
when my toe tap is a maximum of five, I want to make sure I just move this guy a little bit higher so we can tap it. So how high do you want it? That's entirely up to you. I think at uh, one it works pretty good. I have no uh, X value there. And I'm just going to key this. So now if I were to go over here with my toe tap, I can just tap it up and down however I want. Next, these are my own little things I like to do, like the ball roll. I'm going to rotate my ball now at rotate Z and also control the same channel. So this will allow me to rotate each of these one by one in case the user wants this. Typically, if I were to do one like this, I would not have the foot roll and I would have the animator animate all this by hand using these channels. So if you use this method, you're not going to have a foot roll, um, mainly because there's almost no point to that. Or what we can do is have it so that the foot roll controls the ball roll and the toe roll. Okay, now I'm done a ball roll. I'm going to say uh, key right here for the ball roll and when footcon.ballroll equals to positive 5 I want the ball roll to be able to move up quite far. I'm going to do a full 90. This just in case a person wants to be able to do something like this they can and ball rolls all the way up there now and I can just key it. But look at this now I can see ball roll all the way down all the way up. If you wanted to, or uh, for a ballerina, you might want to be able to, um, I guess, have this thing go down further if you really wanted to. And toe tap, instead of going straight up and down, I can actually have it go lower down, allowing for like a ballerina to have their toes uh, pointed downwards. So if I look at this now and check out my foot roll, it's still there. I'll also add on the ball roll, ball roll, so it goes even further. It's actually pretty cool my foot roll now, I want to add a toe roll so here's my toe roll, toe, rotate Z key that so um, I now want it at toe roll at positive 5 to have my toe itself rotate quite high again I'm going to do a full 90 just in case the person wants to be able to go all the way up here, they can. So with that, I click key, and now I have a toe roll that goes up and down. Let's say I want to edit something, though. Uh, I can still go back here and say I changed my mind, and I want to be able to have a toe tap that goes lower than zero. So I can go modify, edit attribute, even after the fact, and go back to toe tap and say, I want to also have a negative 5 as my minimum. This way, um, in case I want to go lower than this point and have the toe curled down, I can still do that. So again, that would require me to go to toe tap. Let me double check that real quick. Yes, toe tap. And I'm going to use my toe IK again and translate Y. If I set my toe tap now at negative 5, I can actually go down there and set my translate for this to be at negative 1, which curls it lower. And you have it curl even more if you want. If I continue moving down, I can have the toe curl down quite far. So I'll have this actually set to negative 2, with this still at 0. That way it curls down quite low. I key that. If I look at my toe tap now, I can still go between all of them, but type 0, it goes back to where it was before. So this allows me now to have my toe swivel to go back and forth. A ball roll, which I can also do this manually by hand, and do a toe roll afterwards. A whole toe tap. My knee twists the way I want it to. And I have all the set driven keys that I want for my leg. Okay, so I'm going to delete all my type by history and I'm just going to save this. And the next thing we always have to do is duplicate things. So how do we work with this? I'm going to go to my hypergraph hierarchy here. 
I'm going to look at everything. So in order to duplicate this properly, you'll want to group things, almost like these two nodes right here. And I'm also going to go to my uh, Hypershade. Just in case things don't work out as well as I'd hoped, sometimes I have to also select these two right here. Then I group. So edit, group, the grouped. So now if I take this, my front view, keep on going up, so I select my group here. So again, if you look at my hierarchy, this is the top group node I want. And I'm going to move this where I want it to be at. In this case, I'm just going to hold X, just have a very nice clean snap. Then I'm going to go to edit, duplicate special options. I'll reset my settings and just click on input, duplicate input graphs, apply, just type a negative value on my translate X and now I have the other side. With this, I can now double check and see if my uh, knee twist and everything is working. And there it is. Cool. Awesome. I like that. So, there are things I like to change though. There's a knee twist. This is working perfectly fine. But, my toe symbol, if I go left and go right, yes, this matches but the value is a bit off so what we could do is flip that but I do like the whole moving left and right and it matches properly so I'll keep that the same um, now I'm going to go back to my hierarchy I'm going to click on this group node to see which one's selected go to modifier prefix hierarchy names add my L underscore for that go back over here modify prefix hierarchy names right underscore. Now that we have both of these, um, let me just create a hip joint of some sort. There's a little hip. And both of these can now be parented to that. So I can shake the hips all I want. Next, a lot of times we have a world controller of some sort. A world controller controls everything that moves around. So if we create a curve now, circle like so. Freeze my transforms. This is not required for the quiz either. This is just so you guys understand how this works. Um, I'm also going to create a uh, arrow set. So if I double click on here, use linear, and I just hold X when creating this. So I'm going to use a grid snap. There I have that. I'm then going to rotate this with discrete of 90. And I'm going to duplicate that over there. Then use Shift D to do the rest. I'm going to then take all of these, parent it to my ring. So that's parent. Now that way when I select it, all of them are selected. And I'm going to go to all of these in here, go to my attribute editor. You'll find under here, you can change your component displays, or components, etc. all in here. Also the main curve, you can also find Underneath it, there's also this own display settings. And I want to use a template for all of these, which allows me not to be able to select that anymore. And there we go. We have a ring that has the uh, four arrows. The next thing we want to do is parent these to that. But in order for us to parent that, we need to break it from its current group. Currently, if we look at our foot controllers, they are underneath a group. So what happens if I take my foot controllers out of said group, you'll start getting transforms. So I'm going to go in here, select both of these, middle mouse drag and drop them off. When I do this, we'll find that this foot controller now has a transform inside. 
So we go to modify freeze transformations. You'll get an error that freeze transformation was not applied because R, etc. had an incoming connection. So what does that mean? That means these right here are parented to these rings. So we need to break those parents now. So that's just these two joints right here. Middle mouse drag them off. Now we can go back to foot controllers. Freeze our transforms with no problem. Go back in here. Drag them back in and under the foot controllers. Why do we do this? In case I move this around, I can always type zero right back for it and it always goes back to where it used to be. And this time it's no longer dependent on the group nodes transform. That'll leave us with two floating group nodes that we no longer need. And you'll want to delete that. And you want to take both of these right here and move it underneath the NURB circle. I'm going to rename this to world con. And also I'm going to give the hip its own controller of some sort. So I'm going to create a curve here. I'm going to snap it to the vertex. Scroll that open so it's a little bit larger. I'm going to modify freeze my transforms. In this case, it's going to be my hip con. I'm going to select this. Shift select this joint. Go to constrain, orient, options. I'm going to reset my settings and apply. If I use that now, I can rotate my hip. Let me fix that. Let me do that again. I'm going to select this controller, select my hip, strain orient. So this has the blue, this one doesn't. And I'm also going to turn off my discrete rotate so now I can rotate however I need. And there we go, we have all of that. Now I'm going to create my root joint. Just to con have that connected. I'm going to select this hip, shift select this root joint, parent, this is my root, so it controls everything. I'm going to create another ring for it, or a box, or whatever you want to use. Snap it there, free as my transforms, call this my root con. This time I'm going to parent this joint this controller and parent these two together so now I have this controller that goes up and down this one that rotates freely and I'm going to take this controller shift click the world parent those this will now allow me to move this anywhere I want scale however I want and still have everything move the way I need it to move. So if I go to my hypergraph hierarchy now I can see that the entire rig is under a single node in which I can collapse later. I hope that was useful for you guys. Um, just practice and you guys should be okay for the quiz.